Hallelujah. Somebody shout out hallelujah. Today I'm honored to share with you guys a message, which is about God's love. God's love is a central theme in the Bible. It's a central theme in the Bible. And there are several verses that help us understand his love for us. Join with me as we explore these verses. The first verse is the first verse is Romans 5, verse 8. And it says, But God commanded his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This verse shows us that God's love is not just in words, it's in actions. Even, even when we were far from perfect and he deserved his love, he gave us his son, Jesus, to die for our sins. The ultimate sacrifice demonstrates his depth, his depth of love for us. The second verse, which everyone knows, is John 3.16, which talks about the greatest gift. John 3.16 is, says, for God so loved the world, he gave the, his only begotten son, Jesus. This verse highlights the greatest gift we could ever receive, eternal life, through Jesus Christ. God's love is so great that he gave his only son to give us, to save us. Showing his love is not limited by the extent to everyone in the world. The third verse is First John 3, verse 1, and it talks about God's children. And it says, See what great love of see, see what the great love the Father has lavished on us. And we should be called God's the children of God. And that is what we are. This verse tells us the special relationship we have with God because of his love. We're not the, we are not just the creation of or his followers. We are his children. Being called a child of God means we are loved, we are valued, and cherished by our heavenly Father. The second ver the, the fourth verse is Romans 8, 37 to 39, and it talks about the unshakable love. Finally, finally, Romans 8, 37 to 39. No one in all in all these things we are more conquerors C conquerors through him who loved us for i am con convinced that neither death or life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor the powers nor the height nor the depths nor anything else in creation we will be able to separate us from the love of god this is in christ jesus lord this powerful message we are assures us that nothing can separate us from God's love. No matter what challenges we face, God's love remains constant and unbreakable. In conclusion, these verses remind us of incredible love of God, the incredible the love God has for us. His love is active, sacrificial, unconditional, and unconshakable. On this Children's Day we celebrate, remember that we are deeply loved by God. And as we grow in faith, let us let us love, let this love guide us and comfort us, inspire us to share with others. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let us just bow our heads in prayer. Father Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence, Lord. We thank you for all the gifts and talents you've given to your children. We thank you for the service so far and how you have enabled us to speak your word, to sing your songs with passion and purpose, Lord. Pray that you would bless the word that has already come out of our mouth and the words that will continue to come out of our mouth, Heavenly Father. In this month of love, please help us to show love the same way you showed love to us. Please reflect all that concerns us individually and in all things. Let your will be done and your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. I want to thank my sister, Success, for an amazing word. And continuing, I will be preaching on loving the unlovable. So our Bible text for this passage is 1 John 4, verse 11 to 12 and 19 to 21. And it states,
1 John 4, 11 to 12. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No man has seen God. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Now I'll be reading from 19 to 21, and it states, We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Now, I'm sure many of us have people in our lives that we may consider unlovable. Maybe they're difficult to be around. Maybe they lower our self-esteem. Maybe they just kill the vibe. But as Christians, we are instructed to love people. Now, to really delve into why it's so important to love those who we see as unlovable, I want us to reshape our understanding of love. First of all, we must remove the duty and obligation mindset. Many of us as Christians think of love as a chore, as something we have to do, rather than something that we are privileged to share because we also receive the same love. The real reason we love those who are difficult, annoying, and hurtful is because we are recipients of that same radical love that God is asking for us. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Let me give you a picture. When Jesus was dying on the cross, while the people were mocking him, ridiculing him, driving those nails through his hands, I'm sure we can all agree that in that moment, they were being unlovable. But even yet, Christ was dying for them. Christ was praying that, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. And again, just to drive it some more, it leads us to our main Bible passage, which is 1 John 4.19, and it says, we love because we first, because God first loved us. It's a short and simple verse, but it encapsulates the very reason why we are called to show love. As Christians, our love for others should be shaped by God's love for us. It shouldn't be shaped by obligation. It shouldn't be shaped as something that we need to check off our to-do list to be that good Christian. It should be shaped because we are also loved by an amazing God. And only when we stop seeing love as something we have to do, but, but as something we get to share with a broken and hurting world, will it become easier to love those who we may feel are unlovable. Now, I want to also anchor this by showing how love is powerful. For example, let us imagine this great God we serve. God is all-powerful, all-majestic, all-glorious, all-mighty, all-worthy, all infinite. He needs no introduction. His greatness cannot be described. God could have chosen power, greatness, awe, and wonder to describe himself, but he chose love. And that speaks volumes on just how powerful it is in the human heart. The Bible says that God is love. And if we serve a God that is love, who are we to not show that same love to those we may consider unlovable? Maybe it's a coworker who puts you down and says, oh, I don't like the way you're doing your work. Maybe it's a boss who doesn't appreciate what you're doing for the company. Maybe it's a classmate who bullies you and puts you down. Maybe it's a neighbor who doesn't, you know, who doesn't say hi to you or who always has a bad attitude. It doesn't matter who it may be. It might even be yourself. Maybe you deem yourself as someone who is unlovable. You've made mistakes. You've had regrets. Maybe you failed at something you really care about, but it is important that we love ourselves and love each other. Now, moving on to my second point, we must realize that when it comes to loving the unlovable, it is not us doing it. We can't do it in our own strength. It is the Holy Spirit that is doing it. Let us open our Bibles to Luke 15, 11 to 24 to read the case of the prodigal son. That's Luke 15, 11 to 24. And it says, and he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that fall it to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together 
and took his journey into a far country, and there he wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks, and the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But his father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. As we can see from this, this parent's childish father's son lived a very rebellious life. He did not listen to his father. He did not give him the respect that was due to him. And yet, when the son came running back, the father could have slammed his door shut. He could have disowned him. He could have said, no, I don't know you. He could have turned him back and go back to where you came from. But instead, he brought him in with open arms. Though the son did something that was very unlovable by wasting his finances, he showed love even when it was difficult. Maybe it's a rebellious child. Maybe it's a broken friendship. Maybe it's something that cuts really deep that you find, how on earth can I possibly let this go? It is important to allow the Holy Spirit to work in your heart. And while you may not necessarily feel like you are loving that person, let your love show through your actions first, and the Holy Spirit will let it manifest in your hearts. God will help us. Now, I want to give a real-life story of also showing the love of God. We've looked at the Bible, we've looked at case studies, but let me give you a real-life story. Some time ago, there was a son whose mom abandoned him in like a river or like some kind of ditch. He got adopted, he grew up to be a very successful man, and he ended up finding his birth mom. Throughout his life, he's faced feelings of an inferior mentality, low self-esteem, maybe I'm not worthy to have a mom. Imagine Mother's Day and Father's Day for him, seeing everyone rejoicing with their parents, and yet he doesn't even know who, who his mom is, and he doesn't even know that his mom loves him. And yet, when he met his birth mother, Rather than giving into the hurt, giving into everything he has felt throughout his childhood and adult life, he welcomed her. He forgave her. So this shows that despite how hurtful someone may be to us, despite what they make us feel, whether they contribute to our low self-esteem or to anything, we must forgive. We must show love because that is the same thing God does for us every day. Even now, when we sin, when we disobey, when we say things to people that we shouldn't have said, as I speak right now, Jesus is on his knees interceding for us before the Father, despite everything we do. So we have no excuse. Now you might be thinking, that person really hurt me. And God understands our humanity. Sometimes it's hard to let go. But that humanity is not an excuse to not show love. The Bible says, if you don't forgive your neighbor, your almighty father will not forgive you. So if not for that person, for your own sake, show love, extend that arm out. And it's also in the little things. Maybe you're not considering dying for that unlovable person like Jesus did, but it could be as simple as holding the door for someone, saying good morning to someone who didn't say good morning to you, you know? or simply borrowing your tools to them, maybe when they didn't share with you. It doesn't have to be grand. You just have to start small and showing little deeds of love, and God will work his way, not only in their heart, but in yours too. Now, another way to, a more practical way that we can show love is also through prayer. Let us open our Bibles to Luke 6, 27 to 28. That's Luke 6, 27 to 28.
Luke 6, 27 to 28. But I say unto you, which here, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despitefully use you. Now, God is intentional with his words. God doesn't just add adjectives to make it more dramatic. If God says to bless them that despitefully use you, he used the word despitefully intentionally. Now, it may hurt, but God is our strength. The Bible says, I can do all things through him that strengthens us. That doesn't just mean the physical things. It means the emotional things, things that we can't do in our own strength. So we have to allow the Holy Spirit in. The Holy Spirit will not force his way in. We must let him in and say, God, I am hurting. God, I feel hopeless. God, I feel broken. What that person said, what that person did, that person tainted my reputation, that person ruined my, my life, or whatever it may be, the Holy Spirit helped me work in my heart, remove this heart of stone and make it a heart of flesh. And God loves a broken and a contrite heart, and he will work in you to help you love the unlovable. Now, the Bible says to make allowance for each other's faults. God knows we are human. Yes, the spirit of God dwells in us, but we still dwell in the flesh. We're human, we're flawed, we're imperfect, but we are loved by God and we should do the same. And also, one thing to consider in how to practically love the unlovable is to see beyond the surface. The person who you may consider unlovable might be going through something very deep. You cannot be judging someone on surface level. In each individual person, there are many hidden layers, many secrets, many challenges, and many difficulties that people may be facing. So if they're acting unlovable towards you, it might not be personal. That is why it's important to also show love because you never know what someone is going through. Now, another practical way to show love is through silence. It's through silence. Now, sometimes when someone is unlovable, we may feel like we just want to say hurtful words to them, but oftentimes the best thing to do in a situation where someone is hurting our feelings is to say nothing. Sometimes to just walk away can be the most powerful and loving thing you do to that person. Because if not, you may be tempted to retaliate, to say things that could hurt them. And sometimes that even leads to that person committing suicide, which we don't want. So it's important, whether it be through our words, through prayer, through forgiveness, to show love to them. Just to round it up, we are called to be different. The Bible says we are the light of the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. What would be the purpose of Jesus' birth, life, death, resurrection, and mercy if after everything you cannot tell the difference between a Christian and an unbeliever? If after all everything you cannot see the evidence of Jesus' love manifested in your life? We are called to be different, so let us endeavor to be different. The Bible says that what, what sets you apart if you only love those who love you back? After all, unbelievers do the same. To show the world that we belong to Christ, we must love those who have hurt us. We must love those who have broken our hearts. We must love those that we deem unlovable. Because after all, we are all made in the image of God who is love. Now to round it up, I want to read the love chapter. Let us open our verses, our Bibles, to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 8. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 8. And it says... Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never fails. God's love never failed for us. God could have said we could just burn in hell, but instead he did everything he could. He left a comfortable life in heaven so he could live with us. And we must do the same for our brothers and sisters. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, 
We thank you, Lord, for the amazing love and the amazing grace you have shown to us right from the cross, right from the beginning of the world, even to this very age, Lord. Thank you that even when we are behaving disobedient towards you, you are still giving us breath in our lungs. You are still providing for us. You are still showing our love to us, Lord. Father, you understand our humanity, Lord. Please grant us the grace to forgive, to show love to those who we deem unlovable, Lord God, but to see people as more than just imperfect human beings, but as people who are loved, called, and chosen by you, Lord. And I pray that as we show this love, we will be a light and a beacon of hope to this dying and broken world, Lord. We just about all that concerns every single individual here, Lord. We thank you for this children's service so far. We worship and adore you in Jesus' name.